right, people, welcome back to Uncensored Surmise, episode 178. Um, I'm not going to go through the tagline because y'all go should... through it. <laughs> go through it. It needs to be there every week. It, it needs to be there every week. Go through it. All right, people, uh, welcome to Uncensored Surmise, the world's greatest conversation. This is not the Cado cast, this is not the Pacify cast. If you have sensitive errors, please exit stage left. This is not Good Morning America. We might say a couple things. Um, everybody's opinion is welcome. You can agree, disagree, or agree to disagree. Um, it's all in good banter and debate. Man. Keep your panties out of a bunch, man. Spread them out, son. Do, do something with them, John. <laughs> Take them off and burn them. Take them off and burn them. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right. Um, we haven't done this in a while, so I figured we'd start off the icebreaker with this. And I want to ask the both of y'all... Uh, Matter of fact, do y'all want to intro y'all self? Like, who's here with me today? What's up? It's Ish. No. <laughs> okay. He's playing coy today. Because normally he'd be like, yeah, I mean, know who the fuck it is. You did. <laughs> He's playing coy today. Sorry, you did. <laughs> All right, so that goes right into the icebreaker. Um, no, saying he's tired. Um, the icebreaker, we're going to do like a mental and physical um, check. So I want to ask the both of y'all. Um, are you getting enough rest right now? Like, how is your day to day? How are you feeling? Um, are you getting enough rest? No. And I and, and I know I need to, but it's just the nature of the beast. I got a lot going on, but it's for good reason. I'm trying. I'm trying to do some things. I'm trying to accomplish some things. So it takes dedication and work. You know. Um, so. The only time I kind of can get a, uh, get any kind of rest is on a Sunday, and it's like that just flies so fly by so quick. Nice. Where you know it, I'm, you know, I'm getting ready to prepare for myself for the next day or whatever. So, facts. And um, I, just to piggyback off of what you were saying, um, in order to be successful or to reach certain goals that you might want to attain, there's going to be sacrifices that have to be made, whether that be with your family, friends. Um, Anything that's a part of your life. If you want to attain a certain level of something, you're going to have to sacrifice something else. For sure. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. But um, Ish, what's your answer? Um, so I've been finding a little more time to be able to, like, you know, come home, kind of chill out, get in the bed a little bit earlier. Unfortunately, rest for me hasn't been coming easy. So even though I'm in the bed early and I go to sleep, my rest is restless, if that makes sense. So I don't feel like I'm getting adequate rest, um, even though I'm trying to. So hopefully uh, soon. I'm a proponent of naps. Um, I really think that naps are essential, and I love naps. But I haven't been getting my daily naps lately. And that's kind of pissing me off. I cannot nap. <laughs> that's kind of pissing me you. off. Man. I like getting my daily naps. They help me get through um, the week. And through the days, because I'm normally, uh, I'm a night person, so I'll be up to like 3, 4 in the morning on a regular basis. So throughout the day, I have to get my naps in throughout the day, but I've been having so much other shit bouncing around that I haven't really been getting my naps. And that is really pissing me off a little bit. Well, you know, um, uh, I just want the people to find time to get a, re a nap or some rest here and there. Um, I know we all have a lot of goals and things that we're trying to reach, but it's essential and it's healthy to get a little get a little rest, get a little nap here and there. Even though I'm probably about to go on like a six month run where I don't get no rest because I got some shit that I'm trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> but if you can afford to, uh, not financially, but you know, just space and time wise, go ahead and get you you know some rest. That's what I want to say to the people, man. Shout out to the congregation, man. How y'all doing today? Uh, make sure y'all hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you have subscribed to the channel if you haven't already. And we're going to get into some uncensored minds. Now, normally when we do these layouts, um, now that we have transformed into another format, um, everybody sends their topics and their whatever, and then I'll schedule a layout to where the show falls together. Everything falls together. But today, I'm going to do it a little bit different. So, 
you sh- out of your top three topics that are our deep dive topics, which one of those do you want to get into? <laughs> what? <laughs> Say what now? Say no. Um, mm. I really do want to get into the do you feel things should be addressed when people say or do things or do you believe in letting things kind of slide? What do you feel about the statement choose your battles wisely? Uh, you want to go now? Do I want to tell you on what my topic is or no. answer <laughs> H? Oh. <laughs> go to you next big dog. Just hold on. Wait, one more time. Hit me with it one more yes. time. Do you feel like things should be addressed like, I guess, like, right away when people say or do things or do you believe in, like, letting things slide? What do you feel about the statement, choose your battles wisely? It's a slippery slope, you know what I mean? Because, you know what I mean, if, if hindsight is twenty twenty, everybody everybody's going to say, oh, you let it, you know, think before you act. But that's kind of hard in the moment because the first thing you want to do is react or speak your piece. But as I'm learning, as I'm as I'm on this new, you know, newfound journey of um, just bettering myself and and trying to, you know, do things a little differently, I find myself now thinking before I react. You know, what I mean, I process it in my mind like, all right, cool. Like, does this need me to, to entertain it? Mm-hmm. You know, does this need that type of energy? Or, and I fall back for a minute, gather some more information, check my energy, check my emotions, and then. Re, you know what I mean? Then we go into it. So, you know what I mean? I'm process, progress and work. Right. Um, I normally do try to hold off for a second to allow my emotions to succeed or to this process with is what it's all about first before I address it. So I'm a person who, no, I don't want to address things right away. Is that... Is that conditionally based? Meaning, like, is that only in relationships that you do that? What if no, it's an altercation to... or a disagreement, let's just say, with, uh, you know, somebody on the street or, like, a neighbor or something? Um, I normally don't pay outside people are pretty much mine. <laughs> so I just ignore a lot of shit. Cause I I could like if I, if it's like if I can't kill you like, <laughs> like if it ain't worth me killing you right now like I quickly process it in my mind like I, cause I don't I don't want to sit there and do the arguing and none of that shit so if it's some outside people and if it's not like a worth a body I just ignore the shit right you know unless it's like gets too close to my circumference then you gotta address it but if it's a distance away I'll just ignore the shit but yeah I try to do that. Uh, practice in everything in my life just so I can make sure that I'm processing it right and that I'm removing my emotions of it and that's something that um, I gradually learned because you know like we all are when we young we just right at it but yeah as I'm getting older I take a step back and I don't want to address everything right there and there unless it has to be like if you want to be like alright no we gotta do this shit right now then alright fuck it let's do it now, how I respond, you gonna have to deal with that because <laughs> you didn't give me my time to go through it. But my practice is to not address um, right then and there. What's your answer? So I feel like now, <laughs> as I've grown up some, um, I definitely try to be mild mannered and think before I speak. And just not be so reactive all the time because it's easy for me to be very reactive to what people say and do. Like, that's like, I'm a quick, like, what the fuck? Like, you know, that type of energy, you know? But um, that was me when I was younger. Now I think more. And I feel like people sometimes don't allow themselves the opportunity to grow out of that. Like, that's always something that people feel like it is who I am. That is who I am. And I'm always going to be that. But you kind of have to outgrow that because the older you get, you realize the simplest of things can go 280 degrees to the right. 
I mean, to the left or whatever, like where it doesn't necessarily have to go. All right, I want to ask you a question, uh, piggybacking off of that, because I see this a lot with women, and I don't think we really get involved in these other things, but girls hate like when other people are staring at them. Yeah, that's the thing. That's definitely a thing. Um, when I was younger, I used to be like, what the fuck is you exactly. looking at? <laughs> like, I'd be like... I ain't the I ain't the motion type, but I actually like yeah, you love me. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, you because you again? yeah, you kind of want to know. And like me, I'm very theatrical and and animated, so I can I help you? Right. What's what's up, sis? Right. But now I just be like, how you doing? Right. Like I I do it in a facetious way now. Like how you doing? And I'll smile, even if it's a little fake smile. Like how you doing? What's up? And then typically most of the time, like people are just either admiring you they want to say something to you but can't or or are afraid to or don't know how you're going to come off um and then you know i find that they'll be like oh hey how you doing like you know and then it's not the mean mug or the girl that i thought it was initially and it kind of just brought the whole situation down all right so let's uh let's walk through this before we get out of this topic and um play in a couple different scenarios so say your girl nudges you at four in the morning now, and she got beef, and she want to address this shit right here, right now, at four in the morning. You got to get up at 6.30 to get yourself ready for work, but at 4.30, she feels like, this is the time, nigga. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are, you, are you going to address it right then and there? Yeah. It's just like the quote we did two weeks ago right. about the addressing things in the moment. I can't just... <laughs> when there's something I'm up like, um, but yeah if, if, I mean I'm, I'm addressing it okay. I like to ask you guys you know what I mean Be believe it or not I like to get the shit out the way okay. like I don't like to let that shit sit on my spirit so you don't mind that she woke you up as you as you about to get ready to go to work um, I'd rather you do it there than while I'm at work right cause it's like yo I'm at work you know I can't talk freely you, you, you know it's not gonna be a dialogue to where we can we can both speak freely however we want to speak because you already know I'm at work. So, you know what I mean? But if you do that right there, all right, cool. If my sleep broke, all right, cool. I can deal with that because we're, we're in the home, we're next to each other, whatever the case may be. Yeah, I can deal with that a little bit differently than just calling me after I done left the house and we was in the house again. <laughs> and now you want to paragraph me up right. or call me. Yeah, I hate the paragraphs. Yeah. All right, Ish, what's your uh, answer on the vice versa? Um, you get up at four thirty, so yeah, I'm up to two That's in the morning. Heavy. So the, the two in the morning, so you just got to sleep. Mm -hmm. You just got to sleep eleven. It was a long day. You just got to sleep eleven. The two in the morning, you get the nudge. It's like yo, I need to talk to you about something. What's up? <laughs> Crazy each about to come out, y'all. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't really know if I'm going to be effective being woke up uh, because I just feel like I will probably fall back to sleep or be real uninterested. So, like, I feel like my person would know that's not a good situation to, like, wake her up. But if he feels as though he has to, I'm going to try. I just don't really think I'll be effective. Like, I'm not fucking listening to you. Sorry. Like, I understand you got some shit you want to get off your chest. But I'm half dead to the world. And, like, I sleep hard, so. Yeah, for me, like, my boundaries are set in a certain way. So, whereas, though, if, if it's my time, I don't give a fuck who it is. <laughs> like, don't violate my boundaries on my set time because that offsets my peace. Like, that offsets my mental. So, all those kind of things just throw me off and it just, like, puts me in a different space. So, yeah, I can't do it. So, what about with uh, family members? Like, say you're busy at work and the family member is bugging you about the family reunion. How y'all uh, handling it? Voicemail. You sending them the voicemail? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> What's your answer now? Mm -mm. I don't know, cause my family know my know me. 
I'm real attentive to my people, to my family, to my loved ones and stuff like that when I need to be. Um, but you're in the middle of a deal right now. You have oh, no, I'm not answering the phone. I'm not answering the phone. I just can't. It's just not even, it doesn't even make sense for me to even do that. Now, calls coming back to back to back to back, then I'm answering it for various reasons because it might be something about my dad. It might be something about a family member. It might be something super important because they know if I don't answer, then they know it's or he's probably busy. He's going to hit his back. But if it's back to back to back, then I'm going to hit it up. I'm like, you know, excuse myself and go answer the phone. Right. All right. So, Ish, you had a, um, a situation with your family that we're not going to touch on. But that whole neighbor thing, like, so say a neighbor threw their trash on your property or something like that. Are you addressing as soon as you see their motherfucking ass? Facts. <laughs> is it calm like yo what's up or is it like motherfucker well you know what <laughs> like I can say that I would in certain situations cause I've had a situation where my my neighbor's son scratched the hood of my Mazda the front the hood and the trunk we couldn't prove that it was him but, you know. but we knew because he offered the information. And we were trying to figure out what kid did it. <clears throat> but he kept offering this information. So we was like, it was you. So I was getting ready, I was getting ready to say something else. I had to stop myself. <laughs> um, but we didn't address it. Like we could have addressed it. Like I could have went and knocked on the door and be like, yo, I think your son did X, Y, and Z, blah, 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 blah. So I can't say necessarily that I would address it right then and there. However, like shit, like dirty shit, like trash, stuff like that. No, I feel like I would be addressing it at that time because who's going to, who's going to clean up, up my grass? Like who's going to clean up this trash? So I think I would address it. What's your answer now? <laughs> I don't play that shit. <laughs> My neighbors know I don't play that shit. Cause I've had, I had, to, I had a run in with my neighbor at one point. I got a couple cars, and I got, at one point, one of the cars was on the street, right. and the alarm for whatever reason had malfunction, so it was going off. And they know it's my car because they see me in car, whatever. Right. And I'm really one of the only young black guys or a black guy that's in that situation so they they got my car too mm -hmm. so when i realized the car wasn't stolen and the car got towed i put two and two together because it was two motherfuckers that's every sitting there every day you know what i mean so called i called um tow truck number that was one of the little thing or whatever right and he was like you know come pick the car or whatever so i walked over to the bull i'm like so y'all motherfuckers got my shit told? Like, y'all know me. Yeah, I, I actually had a, a same situation like this. I'm, yeah. I was ready to kill this bull. Exactly. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm like, y'all know me. Like, y'all right. could have just had somebody <laughs> call my phone. Y'all could have, if you know I'm at work, you could have knocked on a people's door that's here and joined next to me. She had called me or whatever. Like, he was like, no, man, I didn't even know. I said, pussy, you knew what it was. He was like, I, my bad. If I, I said, no, what it was was you was trying to be smart. Right. He was trying to be smart because we fr we supposed to be friendly neighbors. Mm -hmm. I watch your shit, you watch my shit. Cool. Don't do malicious shit to my shit to get me. You know what I mean, so I had a conversation with the um, leasing company or whatever, and, and they was like, "Oh yeah, you know we had got how I knew it got told because I called the leasing. He's like, "Oh yeah, we got confirmation. They called us, and we called it to a truck." Right. So I was like, "Well, why they couldn't just say, can you call him?'" Let him know that his alarm is going off so he can come and fix it. Right. No, you tell them to call a tow truck and they, wow. So we had, a, we had I said something to him. <laughs> said something to him again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and to the to one point, he just pulled me aside like, yo, my bad. I don't want no static. I don't want no beef. I apologize. As a man, I should have right. took the next appropriate steps just because... You know, we all, you know, we all got our lives and, you know, whatever. But, yeah, I'm, I'm approaching shit. I ain't for that. Facts. I actually play with you. Facts. Yeah. I actually had that same situation with uh, a neighbor across the street. And it was like, um, he had like a garage or some shit. And I parked in front of his garage. But he was like one of those people that's like, every once in a blue moon, he had his garage. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> so just one random day, I had parked in front of his garage like overnight or whatever, and he had got my car towed. And then when I seen him the next day, I was like, yo, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, you know I live right there. <laughs> like, you could have just came and knocked on my fucking door and I would have moved my car. Like, so now I had to spend like $300 to get my car out. X, Y, and Z. And I was, I was ready to kill this bull. <laughs> and I was ready to kill this bull. Continuation on after that. <laughs> right, right. Because like, then after that, the tension is right. already here. And he apologized and whatever, but I was like, yo, that was stupid as shit, because you know that's my car, you know I live right there, and right. you ain't even come knock on my I was in the crib. All you had to do was come knock on my door. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Which is weird. Like, I just hate people that just, like, like, all right, cool, if I'm in the wrong, I'm in the wrong. But if you know me, just come. Right. Right. Or if you know about me, or you know this belongs to me, if you call the leasing company to tell them that this is a bother... And you could have called him and said, hey, the guy that live in this right. place right here, just call him and let him know that it's whatever. That way, I could have had somebody come there, right. or I could have came myself and got saved myself $600 later. Thanks. And yeah, all the party. Now, when I see you, I just walk right past you. I don't say nothing to you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, every time I saw this boy after that, I was just... Oh, I'll be ready. Yeah. 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 Like, it was, like, like, that's why, I said, that's why I said he had to pull me aside. Like, he, right. he actually, they actually wanted to talk to me. He was like, yo, I feel it. Like, I feel your attention, bro. Because it was on. Facts. It was going to be, if, if he would have said anything or looked at me any concrete, I was snapping the shit out of him. Right. Facts. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, let us know y'all answers in the, in the comments, in the chat, and in the comments section. Are y'all addressing things head on? Or are you taking the time to process it and or, you know, remove your emotions out of it? Let us know, you know, y'all answer. Um, no, as you go through yours... Besides the entertainment shit, yeah. You know which one of the topics do you want us to touch on? Go ahead now. Um, does your mate pass matter? And if so, why or why not? We already know the young lady sitting to my right wants to know everything. <laughs> I can't. Don't so start your shit. I'm gonna throw this one. I'm gonna throw the oop to her real quick. See if she can dunk it or not. But each, does your mate's past matter? And if so, why? And or why not? Mm-hmm. So I think I um, I have touched just a tad bit on something similar before, basically stating that, yeah, I definitely want, want to know. Obviously, you know, I ain't going to be able to know every single thing about your past. But, you know, a good portion of the of your past, I would like to know just because then that is how I am learning you as an individual, your likes, your dislikes, the things that trigger you, the things that you love, the things that, you know, have made you happy in the past and, you know, all of that stuff. So I feel like I want to know. So do you want to know in fifth grade that I had a crush on my teacher with the big titties that her name was Tadios, but we called her Tidios. So, do you want to <laughs> yeah, know Yeah, I want to know that. You want to know why? <laughs> you want to know why? that? Because that is you sharing a piece of you that at that point in time in your life was important to you. And that's how I connect with my person. Just knowing small little things about them that whether it's senseless, whether it's stupid, like why you care about something five when when I was in, you know, whatever. It's because I am getting to know you. I, I want to know like everything about my person so that I can connect with them on many different levels, not just our current level. So what are what are the things that um like would turn the ties for you? Like he didn't tell me this or he told me this and that was whatever. What what is those things like? Well yeah, we already know just Make sure that I know the shit that where we have mutual people, that I'm not blindsided. I'm not going to know everything. I I understand that. Just don't let me not know some shit that somebody can approach me about. Um, that's yeah. kind of hard, though, each, because that's anything in life. <laughs> so let me, let, me take this step. let me take this question a step further. So if, would your mate's past bother you if... They once were gay. <laughs> yeah. 
Psych. But well, wait. But they. they, no they why but not? They, wait. But no, no. Because I take that back. Because that was just me just saying. No, did they openly no psych. tell me or did they hide it from? Eesh, me? Ain't no psych. What the fuck? You know? Like, like let's say, like, let's let's say, you know, he said, "Oh, yo, I used to be into right. I used to be into men. Um, but now, you know what? Whatever. I'm now into him. With that, with his past, right. um, bother you? I mean, will dictate your next move. Right. It will. Okay. It definitely will dictate my next move. Um, and not holding that against him in any way, shape, or form, but just my personal um, feelings or or um, thoughts about that would probably come into play at that point. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't say he would be X'd out of it, but I would have to consider my personal thoughts and feelings about that type of situation. Like, eh, that might not necessarily be for me. I appreciate your honesty. Like, you know, I appreciate that you brought that to me. And, you know, us as humans, we're allowed to change our minds, change our feelings and what we like and what we don't like. So let me ask you. That so might let, not be for me. So let me ask you. So say in the same scenario that I was presenting, you never found out. Yeah, then I'm going to be mad. No, oh. you never found out. So there's nothing for you to be mad about. But you just never found out. Oh, I'm going to find out. <laughs> Here we go now. <laughs> Let me tell you why I say that. Because in certain instances like that, there's going to come a point in time where something is going to That's reveal itself. That's not necessarily itself. true, Ish. Why not? Because some shit don't ever come It's going to be a little sugar coming from somewhere. It's going to be a little skeleton in the closet, a little bone that's going to fall out. It's going to be something I feel like that will indicate that at some point in time, this might have been something that you dibbled and dabbled that's, in. That's not necessarily true, Ish, because somebody could have had a, somebody could have a body and... I'm not never saying this shit to nobody. It's not never going to come out. Sure, and and... Gangsters die with a lie. I, I mean, they, they, it, it just stays put. But in that situation, a girlfriend, it might not be, it, it might not be all that easy, you know, to, to, to keep those um things hidden. But what if? So what if it's the body? What you mean? He got a body. He never told you about it, but and you never found out about it. So it's some things are like. If you never even knew about it, never found out about it, you just, it's nothing. Right. And, and hey, listen, if it's something to be able um, to be easily contained and that doesn't spill out and I never find out about it and it's good at being hidden, I'm never approached about it. You don't never let off no bullshit. Like, you know You're how, like, you know how people be like teens or whatever. We be like, oh, no, we take it to the grave. The shit that we just did, mm-hmm. we taking this shit to the grave. So he can't tell you this. Yeah, I mean, I get those type of you know things that that can't to be, be clear. He is not saying that right. he <laughs> never did anything. He's not saying that. That's Thanks. not. He's just giving a an alliteration right. to each. Yeah. <laughs> never did. Anything. I was clear. speaking on the criminal side, or maybe a body or something. Don't go yeah. to the other side. Yeah. And I have learned being in the criminal field, you shouldn't know everything in hey. that instance. Like, I do agree with you there, but if we're just generally speaking and we, we're speaking about, you know, dope things about T in his childhood or amazing things about Nell in his, you know, years <coughs> growing up, like, that type of shit I want to know. I don't got to know all the skeletons like that. All right, now, where do you want me to go with this? Do you want me to go... Like a body count or anything. Where we like, is, is, is there something that um, your person's past that you have to know or do want to know, or does it? It doesn't even matter to you. Um, I guess it depends on the circumstances because it's, it's a lot of shit that I wouldn't want to know, but it's some shit that if I do know it, it'll explain a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Like if you are molested as a kid, then. I necessarily wouldn't want to know that, but it would make me understand you more. Now, let's say, I'll give each one scenario. So, let's say she did some prostitution in her, in her well, young adult years, you know, and, 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 you know, she just stopped being a sex worker. Oh, I'm good. 
Mm-hmm. I've been there. I talked to strippers before. Mm-hmm. It's all good. Mm-hmm. I ain't tripping. Yeah, like like when I, when when I hear that question, is it is um, I, my 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 mind instantly just goes to. No, I'm not concerned. But then when you put it, when you lay it all out on the table, and you put and you put that feast in front of you. You know, there's things that you want to know just based upon the experiences that this person has went through. So you can be there for moral support. Mm-hmm. You can be there for um, to understand when they get in that mood right. or why they act that way or why they stand offish to this or why. So those type of situations do help right. you to understand exactly where your person is coming from, mm-hmm. what moves they get into, the emotions that come with that. The reasons why they choose to do the certain things that they do. So yes, it's, a, it's, it's that. But when it comes to evaluating them based upon their past, no, no, right. that's not my. Yeah. That's not my stance. I, I think the question uh, lies more in the withholding. So I'm not mad at you for withholding information. Mm-hmm. It's your. That's your shit. So I'm not mad at you for with you don't gotta fucking tell me every little thing about your fucking life. Exactly. I'm not mad at you for withholding information unless that information is going to be volatile to me. Yeah, the only information that 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 I really could be like upset if you withheld from me is like if you knew you had a disease right. and you didn't tell me right. yeah, and then thanks. you spread that shit. Right. Like give me the heads up. Let me make make the determination if I want you know what I mean. But there's nothing else out here that you can do or have been through in your past that I am not going to, that I'm going to judge you on. And the reason why is because we all got a past. We all came from something, somewhere. We had this something or something happened to us. Not only that, it's not my business. It's not. All right, so let me ask y'all this. And I'm not judging Jory. Sorry Mm, to cut you off, but go ahead. Mm. But but what, what, what if it's morality based? Right? What if it's something that goes against your moral code? Right, but that she has. We can't can't hold people to the expectations of our moral codes. We gotta gotta stop that shit. I Mm. totally agree with that. I do not hold anyone else to my moral code. I hold myself to that. Right. Right. Right? Plus, who am I to judge an imperfect person when I stand in that same shoes as well? I'm, that's not my place. Yes, right. I don't have that. I don't have that ability. I, I'm. I'm not anyone's god mm-hmm. to tell you what you've done was wrong. Nah, that's not. I can't cast judgment upon somebody Some, for something that they've done, right. immoral or morality based or you know whatever. I'm not no moral compass. Well, what if you don't judge them, right? What if it's not a thing of judgment? What if it is just your own personal feelings I had and like to, I, skewing that's a, that's your... That's a great question because yeah. I had to learn. I had Still got to be separated though. Right. I had to more or less come to an understanding with life. People are going to do what they want to do regardless if you like it or not. People have been doing things before you that has been a part of their life before you came into it. And we can have a conversation. Like for an example, I am not a drinker. Not a smoker. So I don't like being around that. Right? Mm -hmm. But there's a flip side to that as well. It's a story. I lost family members, uncles, to drugs, to to, to alcohol. Mm -hmm. So that's always going to be in me. And knowing that I've seen that firsthand, I don't want to lose another loved one. Mm -hmm. So if my mate drinks or smokes... Do you feel like you always have to explain that? Or do you feel like I could just say, I don't like that? You can say I don't like it, but people don't understand it. Yeah. Because, well, why don't you like it? Because <laughs> for real, for real, like alcohol is like a, a beautiful thing to people. Like right. people love, like alcohol has to be in everybody's da- daily life. Like right. if you notice, people put alcohol on pedestals. Right. Like mm-hmm. it's some kind of great thing. Mm-hmm. Right. When when you if you look at it from a, from from a distance, you'll see that it causes a lot of pain, trouble, strife, and causes a lot of you know what I mean bad shit if you abuse it. Now for those who just casually enjoy it, mm-hmm. you know it's that's that they they have a hand on it. But there's a story behind any and everything within us, right? 
I might not know that person's story or why they do it. Mm -hmm. Now you know my story. So I might say, all right, you know what? That's your thing. Just don't do it. Don't excessively do it around me. All right. Don't excessively, don't, please don't get to the point where you're just drunk around me because right. it's not sexy to me. Or whatever. All right, so, so let's, let's stay on um, Isha's example of the morality of it. So say that she was a person who uh, molested a, a younger boy or something like that. But she's grown past that and she's changed her life. Do you need to know that now? Ish? You're fucking right. <laughs> here, here we go. No, the only reason why I say that too, because certain things like, it, it, it's only going to, it's going to boil down to a person's common sense, right? If you think about it, shit like that is 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 impulsive like meaning a person has an impulse of some sort or some nature within themselves that made that come to the surface right and therefore you can grow out of certain circumstances but there are certain things like impulses and things like that that you can't always right but this this was 15 years ago he's got the help he he's he's handled it He's got it under control. It's not nothing that he's partaken into in his daily life like now. This is something that happened 15 years ago when he was younger. It was a one-off. You got to know that? He molested a child. Right. Yeah. Yes. I, I think, I mean, personally for me, yes. Because that you are an extension of me. So... I need to know those type of things if I bring you around my folks, my family, you know, and people who might have children. Uh, are you going to judge them? I don't necessarily think I would judge, That's but I would move accordingly. <laughs> like, I, I feel like I would move accordingly. What is moving accordingly? Being mindful. Like, I ain't placing no kids in your path. But that's impossible if I'm your partner. We go to family cookouts and shit. It's an impossible thing. All right, well, I ain't leaving you alone next to little John John and JJ. So now I'm eating my burger and you looking at me sideways. (laughs) Yeah, kind of, sort of. That's what I'm saying. I got my eye on you, but that's not being judgmental. That's still loving you and accepting you, but that is... No, you sit there eating your burger and she side-eyeing you because Johnny's sitting there across from you. I'm like, what's up? Right. (laughs) (laughs) But I can understand it, though. I mean, those type of things, I feel like, you know, if, if... That doesn't... But it's still for the person... No, I never feel accepted. I never feel like... I, I am accepting you. No, you're not because you're looking right at me like, is he going to do something? Is he going to, is he going to say something to Johnny? Well, I wouldn't <laughs> hover and I don't think that in certain situations, like, I would make it known, like, I would make make him feel uncomfortable or I would point it out or whatever the case. <sighs> I'm not going to say that it is not there. I'm going to say that certain shit is conditional with me. Like, you know, so being in that situation, I would know better, like, how I would react. However, I feel like I would try not to be judgmental or placing it on him where he would feel uncomfortable and feel like he was being segregated because of my thoughts and my feelings about it. All right, so let's have a, a transparency moment. Is there anything in your past that you think somebody would judge you on? Um, <laughs> 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 Probably a lot. Um, I mean, because, you know, we have everyone who is holier than thou right now. So probably any fucking thing that I pulled out of my past, somebody going to be like, what? She did that? Or, oh, I can see it now. Like, you know, oh, that's why she does that. Um, but nothing that sets out that's probably any different than anyone else. No, what's your answer? No, I don't have anything that's in my past. Sketchy. What's up, B? Oh, wait. What? Hold you know on. something? No, I, I, <laughs> I can't. Oh, no, I got shook. <laughs> wait, no, no, got shook. He was like, oh, what? No, 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 no. Not about you. I ain't mean to cut you off. I want you to hold your thought. But just round back to me real I quick. Said, Damn. Yeah, B. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. So when I was five, 
If anybody knows, there used to be a Woolworth on Woodland Avenue. Sure do. Facts. With a fucking dollar store. I was. had... Um, yes. Oh, I definitely yeah. stole out of there. So I hope okay. we can go in yes. there. <laughs> Fuck. I asked mommy for... I was five. I was a right. little girl. I had on... I can't even think of the name of the jacket, but I will remember this blue shiny jacket. It was a, I think it was a, a no, it wasn't no members. I don't remember. Members only. only. I had a, a blue satin members only jacket. It had pockets and it had little snaps and little fasten thing. I said, Mom, can I can I have this egg, Mommy? It was a Cadbury egg. Yeah, it was around Easter go. time. And I remember because she got me this jacket for Easter. And I was like, Mommy, I want this Cadbury egg. And she was like, no, you're not going to get any chocolate. We have chocolate at home, that type of thing. I stole the egg. But me being five, I put the egg in this front pocket. (laughs) Fucked your shit all up. No, didn't fuck it up. But the egg was bulging. But I'm five. I don't know no better. So I think that might have set me up. For the kleptomaniacism that I, you know. All right, but no. <laughs> no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No. Can we ask Ish? She clept out this month. Right, but can we ask her, why is this story turned into the nigga all in his 30s? <laughs> or 30s and 40s? Why, no, why is he turned on my turn? Right. Like, all right, you stole a fucking egg. No, but you know how sometimes they, that's why I said, that's why I said it turned me into the klepto me. Because sometimes, patterns, like, patterns. patterns. You check my pocket. I can't. <laughs> patterns. Like, you know, but like, people who wallet. do shit when they're younger kind of follow those patterns. So if I, if I told, that story a nigga might think let me let me just like you did let me check my pockets like you know being silly but you know what i mean yeah i don't know um there's a lot of shit in my past but i don't know if it's something that would necessarily be like yeah like yeah like i burned the house down before like shit like that like i was a bad little nigga but but you know what though like i was a young boy one thing i've learned in life is we all got moments of things that we can look back on and be like, damn. I did that. That's a story. Right. But we all got a story. Right. And again, who the fuck am I to judge you on something that you did prior to us getting together? Right. Who am I to tell you that you wrong for, for being human? Right. You know, mm-hmm. who am I to even judge you in this moment and say, yo, you did fucking wrong. You shouldn't have did that. That's your truth. That's your truth. You know, you know, we all got We all should be afforded to make mistakes in life because we right. all have done it. Right. And you should get that person that leeway to be a human being. Right. You know, if it's it's, it's crazy if it's excessively being done. Right. Then you can step in and be like, "Yo, it's time to like cut it the fuck out," or like, you know what I mean? But I can't judge on my own a past. It's just yeah, not my I can't place. Judge on your past. I can't judge on your past. Um, one little thing that I do do sometimes is I judge you on the past niggas that you used to mess with. And not how many, but just what kind of nigga it was. <laughs> sometimes I do judge you on what kind of nigga you used to fuck with. All right. So when you say you judge, like, is it just something like where it's like, hmm, now I, this is what I have to watch out for you. But it doesn't stop you from messing right. with her. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Because I've been told that before, too. Yeah. Like, you know, you, the type of niggas, like, you know. I just blah, be blah, laughing. Blah. Like, that nigga wasn't me, though. Like, so, I be, I, I, it, I don't even be worrying about past niggas. That's what I'm saying. I don't worry it, about. It's not a worry thing, though. It's a, it's what you want kind of thing. Like I just right. feel like they got it right when they like, came to me. Let you know I'm like, all right, they got it right when they stepped over to the kid. Like it's like, and that ain't being cocky because people gonna take that as me being cocky, me being facetious. It's just I'm real confident in myself, and if I don't got the confidence in me, who the fuck else is? X. If I don't believe in me and I don't put my best shit forward, are you gonna do that for me? No. So it's like I feel like. I'm, I'm him, and I'm supposed <laughs> to feel like that <laughs> because everybody's supposed to feel like that, and that's what's called loving yourself. Is. Right. Okay. You know what I mean? But again, I, there's no, I have no issues. I don't have no worries. That's why that question, it, it like, you know, one question that bothers me when you're talking to people, 
even when you start a date or you're getting to know somebody is, well, tell me about your past relationships. Why? No, I think I think that's more or less um, a woman thing mm-hmm. because they because like you said, they think about patterns a lot. So women, are, that's something that's always cognizant in their minds. So they always like want to see what your patterns are. That's why I think they're asking you. But that. then when you look, when you sit back and you dissect that, right? What have we been talking about for 180 something episodes? What's up? Change. Change. Progression. Maturity. You could have had 15 instances where it didn't work. And you in all 15 of those instances was the problem. Now we on our 16th run at it. You're on your 16th run at it. And you finally figured it out that you're the fucking toxic one. And you create cor- corrected that. So me telling you about that is only going to make you pull your fucking um, lens out. What is that thing? Round thing with the thing. Eyeglass lens. What the fuck is that shit called? Binocular. No. no, the motherfucking thing boy thing. Contact? No, the what? thing that's on a stick thing and you put up to your eye and you be looking at shit. I don't uh, know what that John go. Uh, magnifying glass. Magnifying glass. That's old people shit. But <laughs> you're going to pull your magnifying glass out and dissect every little thing I try to do because you think that I'm going back to that. Right, I told you. They follow patterns. But that's not a pattern. But that's not a good trait though. Right. It's a good trait but it's not. Because... A person is allowed it's to deceive grow. It. Right, it's right. deceiving. A person is allowed to pick up their mistakes mm-hmm. and fix them. Mm-hmm. Right. But on the flip side of that, too, like, yeah, I can definitely see where the asking of that question could be for the purpose of following patterns and, and trying to be a little nosy and, and, and seeing what happened or what has taken place. But on the flip side of that, also, it could be, hey, listen. I might feel that I have it together and what I know on how to conduct a relationship. But by knowing your past and what has happened in, in, in past relationships, I can kind of gauge, hey, listen, this might not work in this situation. You know, this relationship, this particular relationship, no matter how you like it or how you feel about it, each that just might not work because he's that's a trigger for him. Or he's been in that situation and it went left or X, Y, and Z. So I think it could be a flip side to that that is not negative, but more or less a learning curve where, hey, listen, I am trying to learn more about you so that I can be a productive partner to you. Mm-hmm. So um, I guess I get it on both learn, sides. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Learn as much as you can about your person, yeah. but don't, you, don't learn it to use it against right. Right. That's the that's the key. Yeah. Yes. Learn as much as you can. That's going to make you make the best decision, and 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 put you, put your best push person in front of your person. Mm-hmm. But don't use it as ammo, right? To defeat them and take them down when you have a gripe or an argument. Don't right. do that. Or now you got oh shit, I got one up on this person because now I can I can use this at, at my right. discretion whenever I need to de- devalue this person or. Right. And also um, allow them the room to change and grow. Yes. Okay. Because sometimes people don't do that, or majority of the time people don't do that. Whatever that thing was, they'll put that on you forever. Mm-hmm. But like, yo, that was like 20 years ago. I'm not even on that type of time anymore. Just how, how, would, how would people feel if you met a person for the first time and you put yourself forward, but they already had this preconceived notion because of somebody else's thoughts? Right. Or what somebody else told them about you. Now they don't, they haven't lived vicariously in front of you the right way. They just, you live in vicariously through somebody else. Mm-hmm. It's just lens of that person. Yeah. Because they want you to see what they want you to see mm-hmm. and not what you see from them. We all hate that. That's a, that's a bad place. We always want to be judged by you, not by what somebody else told you. So when you look at that from that standpoint, that's how it is. When you're judging someone else and using with their past against them to deal with them. Right. So are you the person that says, if somebody says, yeah, I know them dang shit. Are you the person that says, I'm going to see for myself? I don't fucking yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't go by what people say. Because you might be fucked up. Right. You might have caught them on a bad day. Mm-hmm. It might just not work for you. And their chemistry just might not be that. But we get around each other, we fucking fuck. Right. We might be a fuck. 
friend. Or that just might have just been y'all, y'all, right. that's y'all, y'all history. That's y'all that ain't history. mine. Right. And I find too that pe- I find that people often will say if you do something and like it's a bad outcome or it's like they want to make something that happens your character. Right. Like as just across the board. Like you can never change, you can never grow. It, it was just not that day. It is who you are, and it kind of sticks to you. They kind of m- want to make it your footprint. That's kind of how it is. Each one you was looking at Keith, because Johnny was across from him. Uh, but then, <laughs> then too, you know what? Y'all girls got to stop that because that's mm-hmm. a, that, a that's a lot of things that females do a lot of time. Y'all listen to y'all right. your girlfriends come vent to you, mm-hmm. right? and now you inviting me to game night at your house, and you, and you looking you at me sideways. You giving me the rolling right. eyes. Mm-hmm. Or you giving me the cold shoulder, or you just giving me a major attitude because she told you something about me. That's mm-hmm. her issue with me. Mm-hmm. That's not your issue with me, and vice versa. You might you might not like her dude, right. but she might love him. Right. And right. you spewing negativity into her mind. You her friend. That's her man. Now it's a weird combination. So right. like y'all, got, we gotta stop that kind of shit. Like cool, make you. Like living your own mind, have your own thoughts about a person, and let that be your thought. Don't let yeah. it. Don't try to let that be the thoughts for somebody else. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all. Put y'all answers um in the chat and in the comments section. Um, do you judge people by their past, whatever that may be? Please be honest, congregation. Please, congregation is never <laughs> honest. They they cap season over there. Oh, shit. <laughs> they cap season over there. We're taking shots already, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm about to take a lot of shots. <laughs> oh, we, I heard it. I heard this was going to be a doozy. <laughs> I'm about to take a lot of shots, man. Uh-oh. All right, now before I get into my topic, um, I'm going to tell y'all some a conversation that I had yesterday, and then afterwards I'll show y'all how this all ties in. So I watched the Amanda Seals interview with um, Shannon Sharp, and I thought it was amazing. One of the greatest things I've ever heard in my life. Not on Shannon's side, but I think Amanda Seals is amazing. So, um, a girl that I know that I do like uh, casual business with here and there, but she's also a friend. She posted that, it said, I'm gonna read this verbatim so I don't get this messed up. So she posted and it says, they don't like um, Amanda, for the same reasons that they don't like Monique. Now, I commented and said, it was an amazing interview. I love Amanda Seals. The girl responded and said, I've always loved her. She's smart and honest, but she talks too much. It's refreshing, but I understand why people don't like her. Now, I responded and said, I understand it too, but I actually love the intellect, so I don't mind the amount that she talks. And I said, it only becomes annoying when somebody's talking too much, and it's not about nothing. And then I also said, now, her outfits are a different story. We might have to have a conversation about her style, but that's a different story for a different day. Now, the girl responded and said, yeah, she doesn't really have any style, and it's refreshing, but I can see it's annoying. She kept on uh, repeating how somebody's intelligence can be annoying, and I just think that that is like a shot or a little bit shady when some people don't like to have, like, be, be challenged mentally. Like that becomes annoying. Are we not experiencing that every week? Facts. Like honestly, like, we about like, to get into it. Like, I'll just I, like, wait I, a second. I, 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 I fuck with the congregation. Right. I love the. I love the. Yeah, I mean, but is our is our mental capacity, fortitude, just worth all not challenged every week? That's because right. they don't want you that's to be educated. Right. That's why. That's why we about to get into it now. So before I introduce the topic, I actually want to say that I owe Nell an apology. Oh, sure. <laughs> I owe Nell an apology because I saw a lot of you ladies like questioning um, his answer or his expounding upon a specific topic or 
um, women don't know how to love men or what it is for a woman to love him. Now, his response got cut off because I was asking the women, are they single? Because if you're single, who? why do you even think you can jump in the conversation about what it is to love a man? You obviously can't keep a man if you're single. I don't understand it. I get lost. But the point that he was making was he was saying that, do y'all ladies understand that when you are with a man and those traditional things or whatever your thing is, and this one I talk about one trick ponies, if that if that's not the thing for that man, can you adjust? That's the point that he was trying to get to. And a lot of women can't adjust or won't adjust. And you know why that is? Because women, they like to love you in their love language. They don't listen to learn what your love language is. And that's where the, the, the problem comes in right there. Yeah, that's all I was saying. It wasn't no shot at nobody. It was more or less just, all right, cool. If, you, if your person say, I can handle all those things. I don't need those things. Can you adjust to the thing that that person needs and not just be what you think he, what you think he needs to be and be what he needs you to be or what the moment calls for? Because we all should be making adjustments throughout relationships, throughout our partnership, just because a person could learn how to do this on their own or become of a help to you in that aspect mm -hmm. so like and i think people like got took offense to that and they were challenging and then they, and then when people when people don't understand or they have no answer for you right. they then challenge you with another question well right. now are you doing that or t are you doing it or what what you what you got going on i know what i got going on right, right? And I, I'm never going to sit up here and, and pronounce perfect. Right. I can't do it. But what I can ask is, if that per, if, if this is what you say you bring and that's not needed, can you then adjust right. to where you're needed? Right. So that's what the uh, specific topic is. Um, Y'all might get mad at me, but I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> um, <laughs> women don't know how to love men they love men the way that they want to be loved or those traditional things i.e cook clean x y and z they don't know that men have graduated and changed from those things and y'all ladies sorry this is the time where you have to upgrade yourself and step it up a little bit and listen to now where things are going Things have changed, and now those things are not the things that he needs. Mm -hmm. And every specific man may be different. And you're going to have to listen to what he says he needs in order to love him properly. And that is the challenge. Do you so, know why those things have changed? Hold on, hold on now. Sorry. Cutting you off. But do you know why those <laughs> things have changed, though? Go ahead. I'll let you finish your point. But do you know why those things have changed and right. men? Right. It's because we've heard y'all for so right. long mm -hmm. say... That you need a man that's a man that brings certain qualities to the to the relationship and the aspect. You need a partner. So if a partner means you have somebody that's doing the same things that you're doing. Like everybody's capable. So if you're a cook, I need to learn how to cook right. to balance that out when you don't when when you come home late or we just pull the door together. Mm -hmm. You need somebody that's learning how to clean because we both live here. Right. You need somebody that's going. So we should be complimenting each other now. We've learned how to. Right. You have men that have learned how to be a complimentary piece other than just a piece. Mm -hmm. So when I don't need that anymore because I've gotten that from birth. Right. And I've been. Because the woman that had me was tired of that. For tired of the men that was she had in her life. So she said, my son ain't going to be that shit. I'm going to make sure of it. And he and she fashion does. So we had to be something. Now we got that quality. Now we don't want that old school, barefoot, pregnant at home type of situation because that's not it. We know you're more than that. Mm -hmm. We know you're more than just a cook and a housekeeper and a cleaner and a babysitter and a wife. We know you're more than that. You're bringing more to that. So stop throwing that at us and give us, give us what you really are, you. 
All right, so this was um, your specific challenge now, and this is where they were trying to challenge you. Mm -hmm. So I gave them my answer about my physical touch and what it looks like when I need a woman to love me properly. So can you explain to the people in the congregation, in the chat, in the comments, and whoever the fuck else, (laughs) what is your specific answer on... What it looks like for a woman to love you specifically. It's easy. Just love me. And what does that mean? You might say, no, well, what does just love you right. mean? They need the specifics. Just love me means love me. Love my flaws. Love my imperfections. Love my pros. Just love me. They need a thing to do, though, now. The thing to do... <laughs> It's just love me. And it's broad. I know it's broad. And the reason why it's broad is because I might say today, just rub my back. But tomorrow, I don't need you to rub my back. I just want you to be tender. Tomorrow, I just don't want you to be so overly emotional. Tomorrow, I just might just want you to just talk. Just talk to me. Or understand or just whatever just be there just love me unconditionally love me without conditions don't just love me because i do this well don't love me or hate me because i don't do that great love me unconditionally and it's people say they they love unconditionally but they don't they we all you know 99 of us love with a condition like i'm with you because you do this or you could do that or you make me feel this way that's conditional because what if that one thing goes away? Do I not no longer have love? Right. So that's why when I tell a person, mm-hmm. somebody asks me, Noel, why do you love me? I love you because of you. Mm-hmm. And they were like, that's not an answer. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Because you and, and you I love and you. you. I love your personality. I love, love everything about you. you. Right. Even if your personality sucks, I love you. Mm-hmm. Even if you today, tomorrow, stop looking the way you look now, I'm going to love you. Because it's you who I love. I don't love, I don't, I'm not in love with things that can change. Your attitude can change for the better or for the worse. And I'm still going to fucking love you because you're my person. That's unconditional love to me where all things that's good and positive can fall and break a fucking part. And I'm still going to love you. Or the negative can swift, quickly, swiftly change to positive and I'm still going to love you. All right, I'll show y'all what a, a train wreck looks like, right? So I got this stalker at work, right? It's a, like an older white lady, right? And she like you? Yeah, she's a stalker. <laughs> she cute? She all, right. she all right. I'm about to get into it. So she asked me one day, like, well, why don't you, um, like, just watch the game with your girl or whatever? And I was like, I don't like watching games with girls. They talk too much. All right. A week after this, I'm at work. I'm watching a game on my phone. She comes over to me and she says, I want to talk to you. What you doing? I'm watching a game. Guess what she did? So I watched a game with you? No. Kept talking. talking. Mm. (laughs) And I said, see, these are the points where I say that y'all don't listen. I said my boundaries are when I'm watching the game, I don't want to hear you (laughs) while I'm trying to watch the game. And these are specific points that I take note of why I would never talk to you because I know you don't fucking listen. It's it's real fucking simple. I place it right in front of your face and you still choose to do what you want to do. So, Ish, what is your answer when it comes to um, do you know how to love a man? Do you do you take that from, you know, your specific way that you just pour love or do you listen to the way that he says he wants to receive love? Yeah, you definitely have to listen to the way he wants to receive love. And I think that's what I meant when I said sometimes in a situation, if you if 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 you and I were like dating. Right. And we were hanging out and you said, just love me. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, that that that's broad, yeah, like you so said, mm-hmm. and that's that could be based upon my perception of what it is to mm-hmm. love you. 
But when in all actuality, it is not the way I want to love you. It's how I want to be loved. It's how you want to be loved. And how can I know how you want to be loved if you said just love me without knowing you? Mm -hmm. This is why communication needs to be had. This is why it's important to know your person, to learn your person, to take pride and be attentive to your person. Because that's the only way you're going to properly love someone. I can say, sure, I know how to love a man. I know what it takes to love a man. Be supportive, you know, um take his feelings into consideration. I can cook for him. I can clean for him. I can suck his dick. I can fuck him crazy. I can, you know, do whatever. Um, but that's not all the basis of love. It is reciprocation and understanding and knowing what he needs right. to be loved. So, I mean, it's going to take individuals to be able to say, Hey, you know what? My definition of loving someone may not be the formula. Mm -hmm. So let me figure out what's the best formula that works for me and my partner. Um, do y'all know why this pissed me off so bad? <laughs> it pissed me off so bad because all the women were in the chat like, I pray for him. I'm his spiritual. I'm the prophet. Do you think I need your fucking spiritual prayers? Everybody needs prayer. Everybody needs prayers, but <laughs> I might be more spiritual than you. <laughs> what are you talking about? But that, you know what? That spiritual, like the spirituality aspect of it, like that's cool. You pray for me, but what else? Right. What else is there? Because if you have no fully understanding of prayer for yourself, how you pray for me? Like, and, I'm, and I get it. It's good. Right. I never want to discount somebody praying for me. Right. I'm not discounting it, but what else? And what yes. But what else? <laughs> what else is there? After the prayer, then what right. comes? What comes mm -hmm. after that? So, yeah, praying for me, praying with me. Mm -hmm. that, that's amazing for all of us. Mm -hmm. But what other attributes are you doing to foster and facilitate the love that I need? And, right? And then people say, like, communication is key. Communication ain't always verbal. Sometimes right. it's nonverbal. Right. Watching your person in their element, seeing that, that yeah. person, is watching them moves and understanding what they like and just paying attention. That's a part of communication as well. You're communicating to yourself what you see. Mm -hmm. Communication don't just mean I'm telling you. Right. It means... Picking up what you see. So if you see that I like this, right. and I do that a lot, that's a like of his. Let me entertain that. Mm -hmm. That's the shit that pisses me off the most now. Because a person can see you and be like, yo, he said he like blue. He loves blue. You get me orange. Exactly. <laughs> you get me purple. Exactly. And two, I feel like that's feeling based. Right. I feel like She's feeling that her way or her way of thinking is better. Right. And that, hey, not that I don't feel like it's cool that he loves blue, but I like him more right. than orange. Right. So it's going to be cool just for this one time. I'll give you all a prime example today. I wanted to go get seafood right. because I wanted seafood. I said to Tez... We gonna go grab something to eat right. now. In my mind, let's go grab something to eat. Means just quick. We can go sit down real quick at the little seafood joint, grab something to eat. He said, "All right, cool. I'm going to get dressed now." Me knowing Tess, he don't go nowhere not fresh, right. not dressed. But I said, "No, you don't have to, cause we just gonna grab something real quick." That was me saying, don't get dressed. Don't go crazy. We just going to slide in for a second. Eat up. Run because I got the show tonight. Da, 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 da. I didn't give a fuck that I knew what I know about this man. And we had a whole big to do. And I had to be accountable for the fact that I just disregarded the fact that he does not go out anywhere. Not completely dressed to the T. But just because I wanted to grab something to eat. And he said, well, grab something to eat means grab it and go. Right. And I'm like, no, I meant just grab something real quick. You ain't got to get all fresh. Just leave your sweatsuit on. We cool. So that's the thing. We take 
what we want exactly more sometimes into consideration than the thought and the knowing of your person because I clearly know that he don't do that but I still wanted to do it a certain way so that's what I'm saying and all the times in situational uh, instances you don't see it until after it's already done so now I will be more mindful just to my best friend and my partner, like, hey, okay. You gotta, you gotta be cognizant of this shit because there's no way in hell we could ever get away with this shit. Because then, then people want to use the, <laughs> well, you being ungrateful. That's right. What, like, it, it's not being ungrateful. It's, it's paying attention to detail. It's paying attention to detail plus know what your person like and got right. going on. Right. And, and they not being ungrateful. They just, you can incorporate your shit along with they shit. Yo, I got this, but I got this all. Like, it, it ain't even about a got kind of thing. And I think that gets lost. But I'm getting triggered now. I'm people, getting triggered. And, you know what I mean? It's just people <laughs> oh, gotta. Shit. We gotta do a better job of knowing our people yeah. and loving our people based upon how they want to be loved. Facts. Right. And even when you know them, don't just know them and just say. Fuck it. Oh well. Right. <laughs> because that's it's easy to do. Yeah. I, I've done it. I I, I do it. And, and as we can just see, but you have to know your person and take into consideration what you know, not just know it and say, oh, well, that's that yeah. it, it's, it's not going to work that way. Absolutely. All right. Um, now, I'm so glad that you had said um, the emotional side of this because they were so antsy. We bring emotional balance. How do you bring emotional balance where you're emotionally Unstable. Uh-huh. <laughs> Are we all? Are we yes. all? That like, way? That's what I, I, I didn't. I didn't. I. I. I'm. I'm. I'm I love the 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 comments. I, I appreciate the comments because it kept the conversation going. But you bring the emotional balance. So if we're overly emotional, how are we correcting this? Because we can't get out of our emotions to even see the logic and what we're emotional about. Right? Yeah. Emotions have killed the best of people right. emotions have ruined a lot of situations where if you just stood, step back out of your emotions you'd be like oh shit I'm about to make a bad decision we've seen a young man who was emotionally unstable in the moment lose his life in front of our very eyes I want you to bring more emotion I'm already emotional. I already want to run through walls. I already fucking am hyperactive. I'm I'm jovial. I'm I'm this. I don't need that much. I need balance, calm. I need the difference of what I am at some times, and you do too. That's the reason why we balance each other out. That's the reason why. We have lit, lasted this long or even gotten to this point is because there's something that you bring that makes up for the areas where I lack. Um, the difference is this now. When I speak about uh, women and what they want or what they need, it's because of things that I've listened, heard from women say that they want and that they need. But what the women chose to say you and Nell are wrong when we are men. <laughs> are you fucking shitting me? You know what? <laughs> and, 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 only, and you know, really, the whole, the whole situation was, I was just trying to get a question answered. Right. I just wanted the question answered. I right. just wanted to know, all right, if this is the case, then how do we fix it? Right. If that's the answer that you think it is, then what's the solution? I got no solution. I got every, it, the question was, everything else was, was said, but it was no solution. Right. That's why it's, it's, it, the question was kept being posed. Right, and that's why I had to check somebody on it because they said, no, y'all keep on saying that everything was, they were saying was excuses. I said, I never said what they said was excuses. I said, it's not what I need. <laughs> I think we can all like at some point in time think we know how things should be, what men need, what men want, what women should be doing, what men should be doing. And it's all society based. 
because it's all what we heard or what we learned or what we see or what we feel um, things are supposed to be. But you can't, you can't get ahead Everybody in, in any, box. right. Everybody can't fit in it. We can't get ahead as partners in relationships if we continue to be society based on those ideologies because it, we're never going to grow outside of that box. Last night played out like, I mean, not last night. Last week played out like a play. Yo, I hated it. Man. The play was, <laughs> how can we both talk and nobody has accomplished anything? Right. Because there was no listening. It was, mm -hmm. I hear you, but now let me interject this. I hear you, but I'm just hearing you to respond. I'm not hearing right. you to understand, understand and digest. And that is the biggest problem in people's communication. Mm -hmm. Because everybody says they know how to communicate. Yes, we know how to open our mouth and bump our gums. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We do. Mm -hmm. Shit comes out of it. Mm -hmm. But what we don't know how to do is to sit back, take in that information that's being presented to us, take it in. Adjust it and then maturely respond. Uh, right. We're so and and we're so animated in making sure that we respond or making sure that we get our point across or making sure that we whatever that we are not even listening to a fact that I mean or a statement that the person is trying to help you to understand. We don't want to do that. Right. Look, no, it, it's just like say she's cooking um steak or a burger or whatever and then you say i like my shit well done but she knows that you know it's healthier for you to not have it well done she prefers it that way whatever and you told her that you want your shit well done so she gives it to you however she wants to give it to you and then i throw the shit out the window and now she's mad at me but she didn't listen to me Listen. Just listen. <laughs> if you just listen to the it's way simple. I asked, then we wouldn't be here. Right. Or if you had just a chat, hey, but maybe if you sometimes it just be a general conversation or a general explanation. Yo, this is healthier. Right. This will bet this, you will benefit better. Your body will benefit better from this. That's the reason why I did it. Don't just I'm. I, this is what I want you to have, and you won't have it just because. Facts. Mm -hmm. You know, and and that's just as stingy as and like this is again we said this word and I know people don't like to don't like to 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 put a pers a label on them that's negative, but we have a lot of selfish tendencies Thanks. that we choose to continue to keep going, and you wonder why your relationships fell. Right. You wonder why your friendships dissolve. You wonder why you always back at the same spot Thanks. because of this selfish mindset Thanks. and you want other people to deal with you and take you who you are but you're not willing to deal with people and take them how they are Thanks. that's crazy mm -hmm. it's backwards and it's downright childish um I know a lot of girls that do those traditional things and they be like, I was loving on him. I was cooking for him. I was cleaning. I was doing all these things. But they never had a conversation and asked him what he wanted or needed. So you weren't doing everything that you were supposed to be doing. You were doing what you wanted to do or what you thought is what he wanted and needed. And these are wrong. I'll be lost. They don't listen. <laughs> it's just, it's simple. It's, it's clearly as simple. And this ain't a woman thing. This ain't a man thing. This is a right. us thing. Like We are all culprits of not listening. Not necessarily, no. Because we can't get away with that. <laughs> they will, yeah, they will raise hell. <laughs> they, they, absolutely. They will raise hell. They will raise hell. <laughs> Some things slip through the cracks and they <laughs> deal with it for a minute, but then again, they will raise up. Will raise but we up. will just chalk it like, all right, it is what it is, cool. I'll, I'll live to see another day. Right. 
happy wife, happy fucking life, right? That's what we've been ingrained in as we can be happy. We all have to. How is that the case, though? Why, why is that a narrative? Happy wife, happy life. So as long as she's happy, right. then my life is happy it and content. It should be happy and content. Shouldn't we what both about be you? happy? <laughs> right. Shouldn't we both be... No, nigga. Your happiness comes in making her happy. That's it's understandable. My it's partner, understandable. I want to make her happy. I want to make her happy. That's understandable. I want her to be right. happy. But, but I also want to be happy. Day, I want to be happy too. Thanks. And that's not to say I'm not happy with her. Without with her, I'm not saying I'm unhappy. I'm just saying mm-hmm. that's our goal. Our goal is to equally make the other person happy, not just to make ourselves happy. It should be our. I am now selfishly doing the doing the job that I need to do to make you happy mm-hmm. because you are my responsibility, mm-hmm. along with myself being my re- sole responsibility. I gotta continue to hold myself in. But yes, now I joined into this partnership and now I got to entertain the things that I'm going to do to make you happy and please you. Right. It ain't going to always be right. I'm not going to always get it right. But we should have more better days than we do bad. Mm-hmm. Facts. Um, as a whole, people, let's just start listening and not um, taking things personal and deflecting and giving defensive responses. Just listen to what your person is saying comprehend it and then apply it don't just go off on your own whim and do whatever you want to do however you wanted to do it that's not what the person asked you for Mm -hmm. it's a real simple fix i thought it was very weird that women didn't know how to love men that don't even sound right but I see it's a fucking real thing. Because <laughs> they think this is 1960. And it ain't. Ladies, do y'all think y'all know how to love a man? Congregation, this is a, like a real question. Do you know how to love a man properly? Mm-hmm. Do you do you even care to want to know right. how to love a man properly? Right. And, and, and it not just based upon your thoughts and teachings, but more or less... Based upon what that man that's in your life is looking for, are you in? Are you even remotely concerned about that, or even in tune or in touch with that question for your person? Um, and also, my last point on this, like Nell said, you have to be able to adjust. Like I was one of those people who was like, "My way to highway. I'm I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want to do," but. The more I've been around women, the more I want to learn about women. The more I want to learn about the shit they want to learn about. You know what they'll say about the shit that we like now? I don't care. (laughs) I don't care. That's it. They leave it right there. (laughs) They leave leave it right there. I don't care. I've been with with myself for 43 years. Right? I love myself. I'm I'm, I'm good. That's not to say... That I'm, I'm, you know, content, but I'm good with myself. Right. I don't want to be, a, I don't want to just be with myself. Right. I want to, I want to share myself. I want to have my partner. I don't want to alienate my person or I don't want it to be a situation where it's just me. That's a fucking lonely existence. Right. So why would I not want to do the things that, can please my person right. and I'm not going to get it right all the time but if I'm willing to to fall down fuck up get up figure it out my steps and start to walk back normal and better that's progression that's what we all should strive to do yeah everything ain't always going to be perfect but it's how you get up and continue to fix yourself that is going to have you on the right track. Like, I could easily be like, yo, I don't care about this. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I know how to help you take your braids out. I know how to part and grease your scalp. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know why I know these things? Because I fuck with you. <laughs> I fuck with you. I fuck with you. I'm, I'm looking to, I'm looking, I am, I am willing to look past the drinks, the smoking. Because I fuck with you. Mm-hmm. I fuck with you. I'm willing to take less than what I really, really want. Because I fuck with you. 
And that's what love is. That's that unconditional love shit that I'm talking about. Because if I'm willing to sacrifice the very things that are within my core and in my structure of shit, mm -hmm. that means I'll fuck with you in the long way. Right. This ain't that. This ain't no other kind of shit. This is real shit right here. Mm -hmm. And if I'm willing to, if we willing to fuck up 15 times, I'm going to come back for the 16th because you are who I want to be with. Right. We're going to figure it out. All I'm saying, people, is expand your palate and um, learn how to do some other shit. All that little old cooking and cleaning shit. Hmm? Last week was a well, that might work week, for the simple man. Cool. Last week, last week was a. I'm a complex a, man. Last week was a was a was a show that if you would have seen, I hated it. I just want y'all to know that. Nah, but if you would have seen, no, I hated it. It was the like first a part. Go around. If, no, but if, <laughs> if this stop. was the first part of Nell's journey, I could have went super there. Right. I caught myself in one instance getting emotional, but I was just asking the question. So that that's where the emotion came from. I just wanted to clear cut answer, but for the, for the most part of it, I stay cool and collected because it's just like, you know what? I don't have to perform and put on a show for to for for people to get forget what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, if they get it, they get it. They don't, they don't. Right. Again, these views are shared that that are expressed on the show. Are the views of ours. Right. They don't have to go to you. We just share our opinions. Right. So I realized that not everything is a fight that right. you got to take with everybody and you got to show your ass. You can be like, all right, I put the information out there. They grasp it. They grasp it. They don't. They don't. That's what I mean. You know what I mean? So last week's show really helped to helped us to appreciate if it, if it didn't. Because I watched it about two or three times the show right. last week. I was like, you know what? It shows us that we have such a long, we have a so big, far to go. big gap. <laughs> yeah. So far to go in such a, such a short period of time. Right. And if we don't figure it out, the ones that don't get it are going to be the ones that's lonely forever. Lonely forever. Lonely forever. Facts. And y'all ain't young spring chickens. <laughs> or not even long, or not lonely forever, are always are going to be falling and gripping their knee. Facts. And wondering why they can't get it right. Facts. Because you know the why? And why I can't get a right is you. It's always you that equals out the equation. You, me, equals we. Right. But you and T equals you if there's continuing problems. <laughs> right? Facts. That's a fact. No, man. If, if, it's, if it's been me and you, you and each, you and T, and you've had a problem everywhere you've been, it can't just be the three of us. It has to equate to something because you've been in each equation. So it got to be you somewhere. Yeah. You're the, you equal out the equation. Okay. So take a look at that and say, if I've been in 14 relationships and all 14 have fell, every time they fell, I blame the person. Right. When am I going to start taking a, taking responsibility for that? I am a part of that shit and may be the fucking toxic one, may be full of red flags, may be full of flaws. No, you know what they'll do? Is they'll say, those 14 niggas wasn't shit. Yeah. But, and that could be true. Yeah. Those 14 niggas might not have been shit. But you, but you know what? That's what I was about to say. You, you chose all 14. those 14 right. niggas. You picked right. all 14. So again, <laughs> you still balance out the fucking equation. Mm -hmm. And this ain't no jabs at nobody. This is just real life common facts. Right. Get it the fuck together. Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing you could do in life. Right. We can't, we can speak until we blow in the face. Ultimately, you got to get the fuck together. And if you don't, that's on you. Right. And you know how you get it together? It starts in one place. You. Knowing that there is the problem. Right. And it lies within yourself. Right. And people start honestly, doing the work. These people be knowing their problem. But you know I what? Know, but that's what I'm saying. It's hard that people don't, people will so quick to. They don't think they're oh, the problem. Shit, I'm a problem. Y'all keep no, on. Each you the problem. No. It's easier to say each of the problems so I don't got to do the work. Right. It's right. easier to tell everybody, yo, this motherfucker wronged me. Right. So I look like I'm always the victim. Or the victim or I look like I'm always the angel. Right. So either either way you look at it, half empty, half full, it's either I'm the victim or, or I'm the, the or angel. The angel is wild. You know what's, yeah. You know what's funny Cause it's I'm the one that's always doing it always right. You like you know, you and he's not. Let me tell you a secret. You know what? People not dumb. They well, see your shit. 
They see it. I'm not. Well, going to. I see well, the then bullshit. that's a choice. I, I see then. the bullshit. Right. Right. That's why they don't entertain it. All right. They let you. They let you fall all out of place. They don't entertain it because they know it's you. Mm-hmm. And now you gotta come. In. Now you gotta have a coming to Jesus. Right. Because now you have no other place to cry wolf. Right. You have no other place to cry wolf. Right. People tired of hearing cry wolf. They're not running on. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. All right, people. Um. Let's move on, but before we get up out of here and go to ideology, I just, I, that's Should definitely a good up. conversation. Yes. Um, I just want to give y'all this quote from a, a beautiful uh, black woman named Tiffany. And the quote said... Addish? No, not Tiffany. <laughs> I said beautiful. Aww. <laughs> you know what? After you make your quote, I got a question for the both of y'all. Got All it. right, so the quote is... We are failing an open book test. Mm. That shit was amazing. Mm. <laughs> Tiffany must be beautiful and smart. Tiffany is beautiful and smart. That shit we was amazing. We're failing an open book test. The yeah, answers yeah. are right there. We're choosing not to look and find and read them. Seth, how you doing? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, what's your question before we um, get to Adi? All right. So that question <laughs> that you asked kind of sparked a question that actually was asked in the congregation. So. Right, so this was this was asked by one of our top members. Right, shout out to all the members. Is sure being attractive the same as being beautiful? Since you said no, oh my god, so this not this beautiful. conversation again. This is conversation again. It was asked from <laughs> the congregation. This person still needs clarification. So, is being attractive the same as being beautiful? No, because you don't have to be beautiful, but you can still have sex appeal. You can still have things that are attractive about you, like, i.e., a fat ass. <laughs> you can have a fat ass, and a person going to be attracted to your fat ass, but you're still ugly than a motherfucker. <laughs> so you can be attracted to somebody who's not beautiful. No, attractive. Right. You're still attractive because you got a fat ass, but you're not beautiful. <laughs> it's just two different things. Same as being no, beautiful. I don't think they're the same thing. At all, but because just for that reason, because you know, I found men not to be you know handsome, right. but they have attractive qualities right. about them, whether it just be a smile, whether it be you know something that you can attribute to um, them being attractive. So, I don't think they're um, the same. Let me graduate all. out of the fifth grade <laughs> with these <laughs> questions. Oh, I'm asking like this is like fifth grade shit, like. I understand. That I get a little that. nervous when it when it comes down to the beauty question, like, you know, because I just don't because. know like which way that conversation you is going to steer. Because we the benefit of the dollars, yeah, because yeah. we want to give people the benefit of doubt. We don't want to we don't want to ruffle anybody's feathers by saying, yeah. "Hey, that's why you I got a good heart, but you ugly as shit." That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But sometimes. <laughs> I, no, I'm not. I'm not saying to just. True. Yeah, I'm not saying to just come out and say that they're ugly as shit. But the, don't lie to them, though. But what? Yeah. So that's this, the that's the, that's the yeah. balance that we try that you try to find. Like, what well, is not the, a balance? But what's the not lying part? So here's the, not the thing. Not lying part is this. Give if I, if, I, if I feel like you're not beautiful, I'm not going to be like, hey, hey what's beautiful. Not beautiful. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I was <laughs> getting ready to say, give that example that you gave me, like. <laughs> You know, just just certain things that we do to push the narrative right. of of it that is not true. Right. You know, and 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 benefit of the doubt plays a role in it. Um, just being a sweet, kind yeah. person, they offers those gestures. You know, and uh, and and a, a lot of another part that I figured out on this is that y'all are benefit of the doubt people because y'all are raised um and like loving. Like uh, from love, mm. I was raised on survival. I'm the baby, like I know how to survive. So I'm cutthroat. <laughs> I'm not, I don't have time for the benefit of that shit. The benefit of that shit gets you left hungry because your older brothers ate everything. <laughs> right. <laughs> like I could I could be outside playing and be like my brothers gonna save me something. They look no nigga. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that is the difference in that. Mm-hmm. That's the difference in that. Man. That was a question from the congregation. Child. What's your answer now? Um, I, I don't throw that word around. Which one? Attractive or beautiful? Beautiful. Mm-hmm. 
I hold that for I hold that. That's what I mean. I don't I think hold it should that be applied what to I feel, everybody. That's I what hold what I feel is beautiful right. for that. Like people can be attractive. Mm. People can be cute. Mm. But you know, when you start throwing that word around, it don't have the same right. meaning anymore. It's just right. overly saturated and overused. Mm. So if I if I've gave you the beautiful tag, I feel like you're beautiful to me. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If 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 you know if you don't haven't gotten that from me. And that's not to say I don't think people are beautiful, even if you haven't heard it from me. It's just, you know, it is what it is subjective. Mm-hmm. Right. That's why I said um I had told one particular um young lady to stop calling me handsome because she was calling everybody handsome. Like if, if everybody's handsome. Yeah, it, <laughs> yes, it, it doesn't I, I don't feel special. All right. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Nah, I don't want that. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> but then too, like, I think how I think, like, I, I'm it's subjective again. Like somebody could be like, "Yo, you sexy as shit," but somebody else can be like, "Yo, right. he are he average." Right. That's right. what I'm saying. And my and my and my person ain't crushed. Right. I'm not fucking. My ego ain't bruised right. because one person says I'm average, the other right. person says I'm handsome. That's my fucking I'm ugly. Right. To each his own. Right. Yeah. Right? It is an opinion of somebody. And yes, we do value our person's opinion and people that we admire or we care about or we like opinion. But we can't allow that to dictate who we are. Who we are. Right. You know, some people need to hear these certain things. And I get it, it sounds good, but why are you allowing somebody else's label to define you? Right. You should be able to define you and create your own label. Plus, you should be more than that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's because all I was saying. Because more than that, beauty fades. If it's no, not if it's real beauty, is going to be in the eye of the beholder, right? Because that like person that is going to deem you. Being <laughs> I don't beautiful. like that shit. Each but go ahead. No, it's in the eye of the beholder. I might think you're beautiful, <laughs> even when no one else thinks you're beautiful. Right. So it's whoever is holding that free, that regard for you. Right. I mean, that's that's in the same vein as uh, people. A person can be attractive, but not attractive to me. Yeah. So you can be beautiful and attractive, mm. but you just might not be my cup of tea. Yeah. Right. Thanks. Like your girl Jada Waiter. Fuck you. She's I'm sorry. she's a beautiful <laughs> young lady. She's just not my cup of tea. Oh, star. You did. <laughs> I she, don't. You know what I mean, Lil Waiter. Lil Jada Waiter might be. Eesh, I'm about to get triggered. That's definitely T Lil. That's T Lil Cup. That ain't mine. You know what I mean? You're right, you're right. That thing that's you little cup. That thing you <laughs> know, man. That's his little cup of tea. So I don't need it. I'm that cool. That thing be thinging. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, though, again, it's subjective. We be placing in our existence on people's comments. and so If somebody say, you ugly as shit, are you going to say, oh, shit, I'm ugly? No, you're going to be like, yo, you lying. Yeah, you motherfucker, I ain't ugly. Like, Look, right. my, my main point. And that whole beautiful conversation is to be more just like, like right. Like there's a lot of beautiful people that are only beautiful and that's not enough. You have to be more. So does a beautiful personality make that person beautiful? Not to me. <laughs> does a, a beautiful, beautiful personality person? you make that person shine, shine brighter than anything else? Is that person beautiful at that moment? Mm-mm. At that point, if they have a beautiful personality? Not beauty on the surface, right. you mean? Like no. But some people like that question was asked. Right. right. And that's and that's what I said. People are getting the definitions missing true. Right. Beautiful is an aesthetic a uh, standard. It's an it's a look. It's like optimal. Mm-hmm. So no, you can be a beautiful person on the inside and I'll tell you you're a beautiful person. Right. Yeah. That don't mean that I'm, you're beautiful when I look at you. I'm sorry. So your be- beautiful person doesn't out. mean that they're beautiful. Right. Stop using that word because people will get fucking people will get miscon- misconceptions of what your Try your definition of it is and think that oh shit, T told me I was beautiful. That's why I don't do it. You didn't say I was beautiful. You didn't say they were beautiful. You just said you're no, I, I make the distinguished difference in beautiful and beautiful person. If I say you're a beautiful person, that means <laughs> inside. inside. If I say you're beautiful, that's outside. Okay. Right. <laughs> that is the distinction, man. It's simple. It's real simple, man. Mm-hmm. It's all right. And it's okay if you're not beautiful. That was my point, too. Yeah. It's okay. Everybody can't be beautiful. Just be something else. That's what I was saying. Right. Other shit that you can be. You could be smart. You. It's a lot of shit that you could be. 
They put on one bitch smart today. One bitch beautiful. I see. I just had a conversation yesterday when the girl was like, rather be fucking annoying that she was smart. I was like, yeah. how? Like, yeah. That that's same wild. thing with, with, with um your girl from the, the show. Like, they was ragging on her because she has a, a mind. All right. Mm-hmm. Like, the things that she was saying was was introspective. Right. Like, and they clown her saying, she, she talked too much. She too damn smart for her own good. Why don't you want to be smart? Yeah, hey, I like the fucking mental right. challenge every and fucking day. Let's burn you. Why bring is that a bad thing? Why is that just a look? Thanks. <clears throat> I'm not mad at it at all, but let's get into ideology, people. And let's see if y'all going to play fair tonight in Ideology 101. Ideology was built upon. So break these stereotypical ideologies that people have had all through the times of life. So this one tonight is going to be if your person cheated on you, they don't love you. What is up? Didn't we do this one before? No. If your person cheats on you, they don't love you? That's what they say. Mm. Well, I say, you know, no, that's absolutely false. That's absolutely false. What's your expression? They love you or they don't love you? They love you. They love you. But why y'all people? So people, you don't love first me? of all, cheating yeah. is the physical this is why, aspect. This is why now they will say, if you truly love me, you I, gotta, I gotta use the word that I hate. And that I'm not allowed to use. <laughs> if you truly love me, you will respect me enough not to cheat on me. That's what they will say. And my definition of respect is totally different. So, what are y'all thoughts before I get into? Yeah, this shit? I mean, I don't think that a person who, like, if my partner, let's just say, if my partner cheated on me, that's not the first thing that I would say or think. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't. Say, oh, you don't love me? Because if you love me, then you wouldn't have done that. No, absolutely not. Like, I've said it plenty of times. Like, a person can need to fulfill something within themselves and still love you. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with how they care about you, how much they love you, what they feel for you. None of that. That's just something that they're trying to appease within themselves. Has nothing to do with you, so I don't believe in that statement, and I don't think that's true. Um, I'm gonna tell y'all why this pisses me off, right? Because they will say you would have res- if you respected me, you wouldn't have did it, and I will say if you would have respected me, you would have did it when I asked you to do it. <laughs> Where's the respect that there? And that's why I hate the word because it's so used biasly when it's chosen to be on your side. It's all respect all the time. Mm-hmm. But when it's on the other person's side, it's like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's why I hate the fucking word. I think, too, sometimes people be holding people to standards because they are in a relationship and that standard has to be just set. It's like a set standard. Because you're in this relationship with me, you have to suffer you have to not be fulfilled. You can't uh, 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 tap into your needs because whether I fulfill them or not, because that is our standard. Like this is our relationship standard. And I think that is so unfair. And I also feel like too, it puts a lot of pressure on a person to have to live by that because it's like you take it, you're going to eat it and you're going to shut the fuck up. And then when they step out, then it's, you don't love me or you don't care about me or you don't whatever. But it, you know, we have to be mindful of that. We have to take the time to feed one another. You want to be fed and then you have to reciprocate that. If there is open lines of communication, you're going to know where some shit is lacking. And if you're smart about it and if you care about the partnership and the relationship, then you're going to take the time and you're going to feed it. You're not going to give him an opportunity to want to go out there. Why? Because if he's saying you're not sucking his dick enough, well, bitch, then you better be sucking it 50 times more. If he's saying, you know what, I just want to have sex a little bit more. I want to have sex a little wilder or whatever the case may be. Then you're going to be fucking spinning off the ceiling fan. Like you're going to want to fill in the gaps. You're going to want 
to fulfill his desires or his needs and vice versa. Like we, you know what I mean? Because it could fall on women too. All right. Uh, let me give no a scenario. Ish. <laughs> Let's see what Del does here. All right, Del. She, she wanted you to smash in the, in the ass and you would do it. So she let another nigga do it. Does she not love you? I don't think she don't love me. I just think that she don't just, she just know that what I'm not going to do. And she went out there and did what she needed to do for herself. Are you staying with her? Yeah. Mm. People don't, people will say, no, you don't know what you'll do until you put right. in that situation. I've been put in that situation mm. before. I've courted someone who I was in a relationship with and in love with. Mm. And some shit with this guy I pulled up on him. And the first thing I did, wanted to do was secure my person. Right. And secure them so that it was me and them. And, right. you know, even through the hurt and the pain, my thing is, how could you step out on me when you, how can you step with this person when you had me? So that would, that made me want to be with this person even more, even right. though I was hurt. I didn't want to give that person up because that would only damage me even more. Mm. So, you, like we say, you don't know what happened until... You don't, I, I'm going to leave somebody did. You never know what the fuck you want to do until you place in that situation. Right. And typically when you place in that situation, the first thing you do is you don't want to leave. You don't want to abandon that because that's because you love that person. Right. And, I, and I also want to uh, make sure I make this clear. Um, yes, the person could not love you that cheated on you. But that's not absolute. Like I said, I that probably should. If I found out, though, I'm killing him. I said that on the show. I can't. Did this nigga just say he killing it? <laughs> Some narcissistic shit happening right now. <laughs> oh, you gonna kill him? Oh, I thought he said I'm. I'm killing him. He said I'm killing the world. Right, 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 right. He can't be official no more. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm not killing the bull. <laughs> I'm not killing the bull, but and I'm not gonna say you don't love me. Um. It, like like I said before, I always get to the whys. Mm. Like, how does this work? Like, why is this going this way? And women always be like, I'm not fucking doing that. And it's like, how are you going to fix it? Yeah, how are you going to fix it if you don't know the fucking why? Like, that'll be lost. Well, because the why is going to hurt. Well, all of it hurts. Right. And I think, I is, think is the, the why, why is for some people is, is the stepping stone to not want to to look into the so they want to step and take the step right what but they don't want to that's what i'm saying they always automatically assume mm. it's on them it's right. something like their insecurities or it's something that's a fault of theirs i could just be like yo i love pussy mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Well, then, then the next thing that comes after that, well, if you love pussy, then you don't need to be in a relationship with me, right? And Why see, not? I know, but that's what I'm saying. That's the first thing that comes out is okay well if you love pussy so much and mine's is not enough then why are you in the relationship with me because for men it's a physical thing it's not always tied to emotions i can have sex physically and not give a fuck about shorty at all right right and just come home and still love you like nothing ever happened and this could is I'm not saying this is right, but it's possible is what I'm saying. Your people's minds are so close to the possibilities of life and we have been alive too long <laughs> to not like believe in the possibilities of real life. That's the shit that bothers me. Like they be like, No, that's not fucking real. How old are you? Like you been have you seen this shit your whole life? How do, can you not say it's not fucking possible when you've seen it a fucking million times? Right. But people just want to live in the context of their mind. Yeah, that's shit is and that's it. Boggling. They don't want to. They don't want to see and understand and and feel outside of what it is of their comfort zone and their brain. Like like um yes, I should love you enough not to cheat on you. I should respect you enough not to cheat Absolutely. on you. But I also love and respect myself. And I'm also not perfect. So there's a line in between there. There's a gray area 
that people seem to just throw out the window. Like, you better not cross that shit. Like, I'm human, ain't I? So I might put my foot on the line. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or even cross over a couple of times. Right. But if, if, if we round it back and bring it back, like, who's to say that that, that, that can't be mended right. or fixed or whatever I am feeling a lack of or I am feeling the need to do could actually get some sort of resolve and we don't have to be in that same space at a later time. Like... And and that's, and that's another part of it, the conversation up before it gets there. Right. If we had the conversation before it get there, and you chose to say "fuck me," now I feel disrespected. That's the part that I'll be trying to tell y'all that you can't use respect when you want to use it, mm-hmm. <laughs> because the same way how you felt disrespect, I felt, I felt disrespect. The disrespect. <laughs> right. Right. But it's always one sided. Right. I'll be confused. It's always one sided. <laughs> I'd be confused, man. Y'all let us know if y'all agree with this shit because I hear fucking women saying it every fucking day and it doesn't make any sense to me and I feel like y'all just stepped off the porch and never been in a real relationship before and everybody says these things about cheating and everybody's been cheating on and still with the person. <laughs> but they be fucking red and raving like, that's a deal breaker and this better never happen. It's like, what the the nigga just cheated on you two weeks ago. You still with the nigga. What are you talking about? Yeah. I'll be confused, man. Here's what it is, man. It's ideology, people. Mm-hmm. All right, now go on to 60 seconds of Zora. All right, so, you know, we tape on Thursday nights, and tonight is the NFL's draft night to where some of your favorite college football players will find a home, a new home, at their NFL team. Starting off with the Chicago Bears who had the first pick in the draft. They selected the quarterback out of USC, Caleb Williams. He won with the first pick in the draft. Followed by the second pick with the Washington Commanders and they showed Jaden Daniels, the quarterback from LSU. You know, so they got them a nice little um, quarterback. The quarterbacks dominated the first round. So quarterbacks went one, two, and three. Three, with the third team that selected a quarterback in the first round That's crazy. was um, the North. I mean, not the North Carolina. Was the New York New England Patriots? Let me get their name right because I know Helen <laughs> and Lady B will kill me. <clears throat> the New England Patriots selected Drake May out of North Carolina. Philly Zone, Marvin Harrison. Marvin Harrison's son, Marvin Harrison Jr., went fourth overall to the um, Arizona Cardinals. So that's a big, that's a big deal for him. You know, first wide receiver off the board, he was going to be playing for um, the Arizona Cardinals. Um, East just Philadelphia Eagles um, actually stood pat. It was believed that they were going to trade up, but they actually got their guy at number twenty-two. Um, Quinton Mitchell is a cornerback out of Toledo. The best draft, I mean, the best prospect at cornerback in the draft. So you got your guy there at 22. And then my Dallas Cowboys traded out of the number 24, 24 spot um, down to 29th. And we took an offensive tackle, which we needed, Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma. So um, all of our teams, let's, let's see, um, T's. Cleveland Browns <laughs> did not have a first round pick this year. They traded their first round pick a couple of years ago to get the quarterback that is that is Deshaun that Watson. Is started to Sean Watson. So, you know, they are without a quarterback. But in surprising news, Atlanta Falcons, they they, they in this offseason they went and got Kirk Cousins and gave him a hundred and eighty million dollar contract. But in grand Atlanta fashion, they went and, gra- and drafted, drafted a quarterback. A quarterback in the first round. <laughs> Michael Penix Jr. from Washington. I so, can't. you just picked up a quarterback in the offseason. For $900 million. For, for a, a billion dollars. <laughs> and now you go draft this young Jump. kid who will be sitting behind him. And the first time that quarterback doesn't do well, the fans will be chanting for this young kid. Atlanta just can't get right, man. That's can't all. get right, can't, can't get right. So. Hopefully, your team has made some made a good pick this first round. The draft 
is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and commences Saturday night. So um, hopefully your team is up well. Also, the NBA, if you follow our our sister show, Game 7, um, T and Mike talk, is talking about the playoffs in depth. 76ers. Yeah, it's crazy. I didn't know that. I didn't yeah, know he just said that. Yeah. Wow. But the 76ers. And B, Bell's won palsy. Game three. It just popped up on my phone. So, so uh, also, and, and some big news, um, which East was just showing me, is um, 76ers All Star Center last year's MVP says he is suffering from Bell palsy. Ish, hmm. tell us what Bell palsy is. I don't even know now. Okay. He's just not. He knows about you know? legal shit. She doesn't know about Bell palsy. But I'll give you a rundown on what Bell palsy See, you know is. What? <laughs> Bell palsy is a type of facial paralysis that results in a temporary inability to control the facial muscles. I got it. That's why he's making them ugly faces on the affected oh. side of his face. In most cases, the weakness is temporary and significantly improves over weeks. Symptoms can vary from mild to severe, and they may include muscle twitching, weaknesses, or total loss of ability to move one or, in rare cases, both sides of your face. Mm -hmm. Other symptoms include drooping of the eyebrow, a change in taste, and pain around the ear. Now, Embiid has had multiple run-ins with facial injuries. A couple of years ago, and the you know leading up to the playoffs, he was elbowed in the face, had to get his orbital bone um, reconstructed. He took a he took a shot in the face in game two, which they said could have been they thought it was going to be something that was broken or not. But this says he now is suffering from Bell palsy. Mm -mm. Uh, shout out to Embiid, man. Uh, prayers up. I'm sorry that he has to suffer from that. And all jokes aside, that's why those ugly faces. Be yeah, he he's been spotted wearing glasses everywhere he goes. He's been spotted. Hey, <laughs> this nigga got no remorse. <laughs> he like all he got jokes. No he said all jokes aside, <laughs> and then says a joke. <laughs> shout out to my man Embiid. Yeah, Embiid. Speedy recovery, bro. Hopefully this is just a temporary situation that, you know, will correct itself and get fixed very, very soon. You know, as you know, our health is more important than the sport we play or the career that we choose. Health is always wealth. Your health is your best availability. Um, other than that, um, we like to just leave you. Uh, the past six going with 60 just has been leaving you with, you know, countless of gems. Um, and... You know, we've just been seeing a lot of things out here that is, is, is quite evident that, you know, times are changing and times are, are you know, needs a, a extra focus. So I just wanted it's to dark outside. this. The saddest thing in life is wasted town. Thanks. And the choices that. that you make will shape your life forever. And I wanted to, I wanted to take that quote from my guy, Sonny. Shout out to Bronx Tale. Or Bronx Tale. He told C that the biggest thing in life is wasted talent. Right. Not only did um, Sonny tell him that, but also C's dad told him that. That the right. biggest crime in life is wasted talent. Don't waste the talent that was given to you. We all have a talent. We all are talented. It's the best, worst thing you can do is waste your talent doing nothing with yourself. Or shoulda, coulda, woulda, or hoping that something. No, no, no. Something is not it's going to just fall in place. You got to go make it fall into that place. So please don't waste talent, people. Um, my message for the week will be uh, piggybacking off that beautiful shit. <laughs> oh, wow. You got to do it. All right, T, I'm sorry. Because I just... Every time I, I just try to get serious. Because we can't <laughs> take it serious. <laughs> Every time... <laughs> Every we time know the I, bullshit dude, coming. Every time I try to get serious, here y'all go with the laughs, man. <laughs> That's what it is. I'm trying to be serious, man. Oh, my God. Listen, right off the beautiful shit, people, I just want to say that um, diversify your portfolio. That's all I'm trying to say. Like, advance your shit. Upgrade. Step it up. Like, you can't just sit there with your, you might have a fat ass, whatever. 
that ain't enough, shorty. There's a lot of girls out here that got fat asses. Like, what we doing? You have to upgrade and add value to yourself. You can't expect yourself to be X, Y, and Z, but then you want the person that's over there with all this shit. Yeah. What you bringing? Stop relying on a sexy, uh, right? A, a quote unquote sexy picture to get you through. Right. It's not working no more. People right. want got, people got. It's a lot of sexy pictures yeah. out here. <laughs> like, do something I'll else. Always man. revert to that. Right. Because people see that for what it is and say, Sex. oh, shit. It's just okay. a smash. Yeah, it's just a smash. Just a smash, man. Right, that's my message for the week, man. Just add some but, value to yourself. They, but they beautiful, though, right? Who? That's about it. The pictures? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got to make no, sure. We got to say specifically who's beautiful. That's what I'm trying to ask. Each, cause he said, but they beautiful, though. I'm trying to see who we said. <laughs> I'm just saying. Everybody. Not everybody. All right. <laughs> No, that's why they got to add some shit. Right. <laughs> you ain't beautiful, so add some shit. That's all, right. all add some shit. You wealthy. All right, you wealthy. <laughs> add some shit. Add some shit. Yeah. Boy, you cook ribs good, but that don't mean you're beautiful, huh? Right. Right. That's a fact. All right. Thanks. Um, my message for the week would kind of be piggybacking off of tonight's conversation as well. Just find a little space for some selflessness mm. in your makeup. Um... Fit it in in there somewhere. It, it could make for a lot easier uh-huh. of relations, friendships, relationships, partnerships, whatever. Find shit. a little space for more selflessness. That's very important, people. Yeah, facts. Very, very important. Selflessness and less selfishness. Facts. And no, it says that everybody is beautiful. Love is love. Love is light. <laughs> love is love, 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 love live. Yeah, man. Yeah, love yourself, love each other, and love yourself. I love his little colloquialism. They become like staples. Yeah, man. Facts. Nah, you got to love yourself, love each other, and put God first. You got to, because if you don't, what the fuck is it? Be what else is it? Sauce. I mean, you know, everybody. T already just said everybody's beautiful. So I didn't say that. No, he <laughs> said you said yes. everybody is beautiful. Cool. I just want to reiterate: after you do that prayer shit, do the shit I asked you to do. Yeah. <laughs> after pray, go ahead. And pray. <laughs> That's all I'm it's saying. Make the prayer that much better. Facts. Facts. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> All right, people, this is episode 178, I believe. We out of here, people. Deuces. Peace.